Just hit the top one, it'll be fine. Okay, alright, I'll just hit the top one.
please join us in our call to worship. Lord, we live in your created world. Too often we believe what we see and dismiss what we don't see. But we know that everything in this life is not visible. Reality is more than what we can detect with our eyes. Reality is in the assurance of the invisible. Help us to see reality through your eyes, to look beyond our own understanding. Help us to find our foundation in you, to place our faith in your truths, just as our forefathers and foremothers look to you to be open for us. May we pray. Holy and loving Creator, teach us to grab your hand as we step forward on curving trails, stony paths, or barren deserts. Give us confidence in your love, guidance, and care as we risk all adventures. Give us conviction to speak up when we see injustice, and give us strength to live each day as instruments of your peace and compassion. May we stand to sing our opening hymn, How Firm a Foundation, page 529 in your hymnal.
has taught us. Let us pass peace between each other. scripture. May we reflect on the scripture which Joe just read to us. May we realize that we serve a God who will minister to us, who will serve us night or day. May we always be watchful for the Lord's presence and in thanksgiving and praise give back generously this morning to the God who loved us.
we give you thanks. We give you thanks that your presence can be with us night and day. We give you thanks for the ability to be watchful for you and to know when you are near. Lord, we give back our gifts this morning and ask that you use them to go and spread the gospel, that inspiration to the whole world that you came to bring. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> and help them 
as they begin a new year of learning and teaching and growing and serving, may their minds and their pencils be sharp. May those pink pearl erasers help them to remember that mistakes are okay. In fact, mistakes are an important part of the learning process. God, we thank you for books and homework folders and laptops and lesson plans and crisp new notebooks waiting to be filled. Thank you for schools and libraries and teachers. Thank you for the gift of curiosity and for your wisdom that is all around us. Help us to remember that asking questions is an important part and sometimes more important and finding the answers. God of wisdom, bless the backpacks. Bless and protect each of the students and all those involved in the school system. <coughs> bless all the village that helps to keep our young ones to grow and to learn. We pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior who came to bring us love and wisdom and learning about who you are and who you call each of us to be. Amen. I don't think I said it at the beginning, so I'm probably better for um, for at least some of you. My name is Pastor Brenda Whiteman, and I'm the associate pastor here. And the reason you're I'm here is because Reverend Jean, the senior pastor is growing her family this week. They have two little boys coming to live with them and will be adopted, we expect, in the coming weeks. So their family is growing with love and in a, in a love that those boys have never had to this point. They are, stay in your seats, two and eight months. So. They will have their hands full, and so they will be home adjusting to that new life. And in the meantime, there will be a number of us who will be preaching um, while Reverend Jean is on leave. She's on leave at this point. So we're beginning a new sermon series this week. It's a series about faith. It's called The Pillars of Faith. The series is four weeks long, hence the four pillars, and we're going to talk about a lot of different things about faith. If I were to ask you, how is your faith? Where does it come from? Did anyone model it for you? What does it look like? What are its components? How does it cause you to act because you have it? If I were to ask you those questions, what would you say? Can you describe your faith? Can you hold it in your hand? Can you hold it in your mind? Can you hold it in your heart? Does it sustain you? Does it make any difference between you and the average woman or man you meet on the street. As we look at faith in the next few weeks, we'll look at faith in general and our Christian faith in particular. And hopefully, we will be able to answer some of those questions as we work through the weeks. So I ask you, have you heard the expression, well, that took a leap of faith? I bet we have for various instances. And I'll call your attention to the slide up there, the little duck on a platform that's safe, not going to move, looking down <laughs> into the pail of water, trying to decide whether to take a leap of faith. The inscription says, don't be afraid to take that leap of faith. You have nothing to lose except fear. I like that. Now, this image and many others 
others around us visually give us hints, inspirations about what faith is all about. Imagine, if you will, the faith of a baby bird who for the very first time leaps out of that nest and waves his wings or her wings, hoping not to hit the ground. Now, her mama told her she could do it. You can do it. You can do it. But nevertheless, it took a lot of faith to take that leap. Think of the leap of faith it takes for migratory animals who travel north or south depending on the season. There they are, comfortable as can be, in their home, what they believe to be their home, and the season begins to change, and they're called to go elsewhere. Imagine the leap of faith it takes. They didn't have GPSs. They don't have paper maps. They just take off, heading in a particular direction. What a leap of faith that takes. And now if either of these had remained fearful, stayed stuck where they were, they almost inevitably would perish, or at least some of them would. The harshness of winter is not something typically migratory birds can, can stand. They have to go south or they will perish. I don't do it often, thankfully, but every time I get on an airplane and I'm being told that if you get on that enormous vehicle that's sitting out on the tarmac, there's a pilot up front who's going to taxi out and then take off up into the sky and take you from here to Maryland, where my family lives. And I think, right. <laughs> it's hard to believe, isn't it, that that, that 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 even works. In my opinion, that is one of the miracles of God. That flight like that works. I'm thankful for it, and I know each of us are, but nevertheless, whenever I get on an airplane, it takes a leap of faith for me to do so. Faith in the pilot, faith in, in God's laws of physics, and so forth and so on. And if I had been afraid to take that leap, I wouldn't, wouldn't have been able to visit my family back on the East Coast, or to go visit Australia, or, or Switzerland, or Rome, or wherever else my husband thinks we should go at the moment. And what a joy it was to be able to do that. There are many images in our lives that take a leap of faith. If, for whatever reason, we have to move from our present home to a new one. I talked to some folks this morning who either have or are considering that. It takes a leap of faith. You're comfortable where you are, at least, unless until it gets too hot. <laughs> You're comfortable. You've got to go find a new home. You've got to find new doctors. You've got to find where to shop. So many things have to change, and it takes a leap of faith to make all those changes. I think many of us would agree that it takes a leap of faith to get married. It takes a leap of faith to raise children. It takes a leap of faith to start a new school year, new teachers, new rooms, new friends, new subjects. To go off to college it takes a leap of faith. And if you stop and think about it, it takes a leap of faith to get out of bed every morning. Think about it. We don't know, as we're lying there in bed trying to get our eyes to stay open, what the day's going to bring. Everything is a 
journey into the unknown that particular day? Were we afraid to get out of bed, to put our feet down? That would cause us to never live life. Faith gives us the hope and the courage to take that next step each and every day. So how do we define faith? Faith is a willingness to believe in what we hope for and a heartfelt trust in achieving what we cannot yet see. that we saw a little while ago had to choose to make that jump. He had to choose to believe with his mind that this was possible. That that water down there would hold him up and he wouldn't drown. He had to choose to trust. Trust because he'd not done it yet. He hadn't tried it. He hadn't experienced it. But he had to have that sincere trust in his heart or her heart to do it. Can you see in this definition that there are two components? There is a head component in believing. There is a heart component in trusting. Because we haven't seen yet. Our scripture today talks about faith. In particular, it talks about the foundations of our Christian faith. It gives not only a definition, but also examples. Examples throughout history of those who took a leap of faith in their lives. I am reading from a letter written to the early Hebrew Christian community. They were facing, they had been and continued to face, severe persecution. And they were beginning to doubt. They were beginning to abandon their newfound faith. And they needed encouragement. I'm going to read again, as was done earlier, as Jill did, um, from Eugene Peterson's The Message. I'm doing so because I think this different wording sometimes allows us to see things a little more clearly. I can remember once someone, this was in a very difficult class that I was taking, the um, teacher had explained something several several times, and, um, and then someone said, tell me in a different way. And it was that different way that we began to understand. So this is a different word. I hope that it speaks to you. Imagine if you will, that a new Christian has just said to you, to you, tell me about faith. What is this faith thing? And you reply. This is from the 11th chapter of Hebrews, verses 1 through 3 and 8 through 16. You reply, the fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God, this faith, this firm foundation under everything, is what makes life worth living. It's our handle on what we can't see. The act of faith is what, is what distinguished our ancestors and their journey. It set them above the crowd. By faith, we see that the world was called into existence by God's word. What we see around us was created by what we don't see. By an act of faith, Abraham said yes to God's call to travel to an unknown place that would become his new home and his family's new home. When he left, he had no idea where he was going. As I said, he didn't have GPS or something for maps either. They just took off across the desert. By an act of faith, he traveled to and lived in the country promised him. He lived as a stranger, camping in tents. 
His son Isaac and his grandson Jacob did the same, living under that same promise from God. Abraham did it by keeping his eye on an unseen city that had real and eternal foundation, pillars, if you will. The city design that he was gazing toward was designed and built by God. By faith, Baron Sarah was able to become pregnant. She was quite old, but because she believed the one who made a promise and that what he said he would do, he would do. And that's how it happened. From that one man's dead and shriveled loins, there are now people numbering millions all over the world. Each one of these people of faith died not yet having in hand what was promised, but still they believed and they trusted. How did they do it, we ask? They saw it way off in the distance. They waved their greeting and accepted the fact that they were transients in this land. People who live this way make it plain that they are looking for their true home. If they are homesick for the old country, you can go back there anytime. But they were after a far better country than that. They were after heaven country. You can see why God was so proud of them and is so proud of them and how they are our foundation. For they trusted in both a heaven on earth country and also trusted in God's heavenly country, which was waiting for them. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you. So how many of those faith questions I started with were answered in this passage? I would venture to guess quite a few. Let me repeat some of them. Where does your faith come from? Did anyone model it for you? How does it cause you to act? Does it sustain you? Does it make you any different from the average woman or man you meet walking down the street? Abraham and Sarah, both up in years, took a leap of faith, first of all, to have children at that age, but also to travel to a foreign land. Where did their faith come from? It was a gift from God. How did it cause them to act? It caused them to walk into the unknown. It caused them to trust and not to fear. Their son Isaac and grandson Jacob saw the faith their parents displayed and modeled, and they too lived their lives in faith. Yes, faith sustains them. It sustains them through all things, the good, the bad, the struggles of this life. Yes, they were very different than the average man or woman walking across the sand in that ancient land. And their faith made all the difference. Now, Abraham and Sarah are certainly our faith forefathers and foremothers. But I'd like to share with you another faith ancestor that has more recently influenced the faith we share. This is a picture of John Wesley. He is known as the founder of Methodism. He was born in 1703 in Epworth, England. He was the 15th, 15th child born to Samuel Wesley, who was an Anglican, we kind of know that as Episcopal priest. And his dad was in charge of the Epworth parish. His mom was Susanna. John learned his faith from his parents but most especially from his mother, Susanna. 
She taught all of her children after me, and she was quite the task mistress, if you read the history books. But she taught them and held them accountable for the faith because she modeled faith for them. One, ways, one of the ways in which her faith was tested, she bore a total of 19 children. Only nine of them made it past infancy. She lost 10 children. Can you imagine? I can't even begin to imagine. And yet her faith remained strong in spite of those losses. And it was strengthened yet again. After the rectory where the family lived caught fire, Samuel and Susanna were able to get all of the children out of the rectory safely, with the exception of John. John was caught on the second floor. The stairs were engulfed in flame. Ambulance were coming down from the roof. It was about to collapse on him. He was at the window on the second floor, and a couple of parishioners from that, that area one stood on the shoulders of the other, held up their hand, and John took a leap of faith into his arms. And he was saved. What an amazing story. It left an indelible impression on John and also on Susanna, and I'm sure his father as well, but there's a quote from Susanna that predicted what was to happen after that. She said, John was a brand plucked out of the fire. Now that's a quote from the Old Testament. And what it means is, John was destined for great things for the Lord. And indeed, he was. He was educated at Oxford, and like his dad, became an ordained Anglican priest. And as he grew in faith, he and his brother Charles formed the Oxford Methodists. They were a band of friends who, by a method, sought to be disciplined in their faith through Bible study and prayer and fasting and weekly Holy Communion, which was much less than the Anglican Church typically offered Holy Communion. They also saw that it was important to have compassion and mercy and give alms to those who were in need. And they went out into the prisons and the docks. They got to see slavery firsthand. And they came in contact with the everyday man and woman. Those who would never, ever enter the doors of an Anglican church. It was like they were forbidden, if you will. And so John took a leap of faith. He resolved not to be afraid. He defied the church and he left the sanctuary and began to preach in the fields, to travel from parish to parish. And when he wasn't welcomed, when he went to the parish by the, the priest of that parish, he preached outside, in the fields and on the doorsteps, where the needy could hear him. His faith continued to sustain him as he and his brother Charles brought Methodism to the United States in 1736. It wasn't easy to get across the ocean in 1736. Did his faith make him any different? The ordinary man or woman he met on the docks or in the prisons or in the fields even? <laughs> you bet it did. We have our Methodist faith our expression of theology that is grace-filled, that knows of a loving God, who believe that we believe that all men and all children, all women, are children of God, all loved by our Creator. Methodism is now a worldwide denomination, and this because of the difference that faith made in John Wesley's life. faith act. People of faith act in 
in ways that grow their faith and bring them to spiritual maturity. They engage in private and corporate worship of our God. They study to understand the words of Scripture. They pray privately and together in community to build relationships with our God and with each other. They give of themselves their goods, their time, their spirits to those who are needy and are willing to cross the bridge both ways because the needy have things to give us as well. Those who act in ways of faith do all the same things that John and Charles Wesley did some 300 years ago. Today, people of faith and in the past, they listen, they ask questions, they learn, they are willing to believe with their minds in what they hope for. They wholeheartedly trust with their hearts what they have yet to see. They turn away from evil and the fear that destroys things in this world and open themselves to the Lord of life that they may know and follow him. So what about us? What about me? What about you? Can we name our faith? Do we know where it comes from? Do we model it for others? Do we act any different than the average man or woman we meet on the street? Does our faith sustain us? Can we take those leaps like the little duckling did? Leaps that we are called to make on a daily basis. The leaps that lead to life Life both in this world and in the next. Jesus said to his disciples, The thieves in this world come only to steal and to kill and to destroy. I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. Do we have faith in this promise of abundant life? Are we willing? that leap? Are we just too afraid to take the next step? Let us pray together. Faithful and life-giving Lord, how often did you tell us, don't be afraid. Have faith. Lord, forgive us when fear is our master, when the visible causes us to doubt. Help us instead to follow you, to follow you as our Lord and Savior. Help us to strengthen our faith by spending time with you, by listening to and watching for you, by diligently worshiping you, by trusting in your promises, for you and you alone give us abundant life. Lord, we thank you for the abundant life of new families and of successful surgeries, and this morning we lift up Reverend Jean Williams and her family as they welcome little Marcus and Eli. We also give you thanks for successful surgeries and especially for the recent surgery which Terry Osberger has had this past week. Lord, we ask that you grant us the trust that we're called to place in you in all things. And we lift up this day the health concerns of Kara Boyd and Shirley Winger and Jeanette Horner and Amy Fulton, Charlene Marshall and Sadie Green. Lord, we know that our faith grows as we spend time with you. Time with you in reflection, time with you in prayer, not only alone, but together in community. And this day, we join our voices in the prayer which you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass. Not in.
into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. invitation this week is to deepen your faith, to find ways, to find a God who loves you, to see God's presence day and night, to pray, to spend time with this God, in whatever way helps you to see who God is and who God calls you to be. There are a couple of opportunities here in the church that I'd like to bring to your attention. The one, the mission of this quarter is flood relief. You have a, a slim insert that shows you pictures of some of the devastation that flooding has caused. We invite you to deepen your faith as well as deepening that of others as you give with compassion and with mercy to those who need. Another I'd like to bring, this, is, this isn't going to happen until a couple of weeks from now, but it's just so pertinent to this message. On Wednesday, the 28th, we will begin August, uh, we will begin the uh, midweek manna that we do on Wednesday nights weekly. That week, we have the opportunity to grow in our faith as we listen to what makes a good disciple. Not only individually, what makes me a good disciple, but corporately, what makes us a discipling church. What inside our hearts gives us that power, if you will, that motivation. We will hear words from Reverend Dr. Michelle Morris, who happens to be a colleague of mine. I think she's awesome. But that's not the point. The point is that she has studied the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and how those Gospels each have a slightly different approach to discipleship. And she's going to share that with us so we can each know our own call and how we can best fulfill it. So I invite you to put August 28th Wednesday night on your on your calendar. We'll have dinner. We'll feed you as well. So that's a pretty good deal as well. So we hope that you will do that. And I invite you to stand as you are able. We are going to sing our closing hymn, which is number 710, Faith of Our Fathers. <laughs>
faith which comes from our Creator, Sustainer, and Redeemer builds you up, allow you to take those leaps of faith and give you experiences that deepen your faith in ways you never imagined. May you go in peace. May the Lord bless you and keep you and may the Lord's face shine upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name.